גדול, גאון וטוב לב, בעל חזון, עם חוש עסקי מדהים, זה היה האיש הגדול, דוד ששון. דוד ששון לנדטון בומבי, now known as Mumbai, in 1832, and died in Pune in 1864. Just a period of 32 years. But in this short span, this man left his mark on the two cities in many different ways. In Mumbai, we have the David Sassoon Industrial Institution and Reformatory, the David Sassoon Library and Reading Room, the Clock Tower at the Jizamata Uddyan, and the Margin David Synagogue at in Pune, the Sassoon Hospital, and the Ohel David Synagogue, popularly known as the Lal Devil. David Sassoon was born in Baghdad in 1792, one of the seven sons of Sheikh Sassoon Ben Saleh, a rich Jewish merchant and a leader of the Jewish community in Baghdad with responsibility for collecting heavy military taxes and other tolls levied on the Jews. The Sassoons were among the elite who claimed descent from King David himself. David Sassoon started working in the family counting house at a very tender age and displayed an early aptitude for business. During Daud Pasha's reign of terror and extortion, David acted as the community's unofficial leader and spokesman. Daud Pasha arrested David, but agreed to release him on a huge ransom on the condition that he would leave for Basra. Soon after arriving in Basra, David again set sail, this time for Bushaya in Persia. In Bushaya, he started active trading, but preferred to act as a middleman, especially for Bombay merchants, trading in anything from dates to horses in return for cargoes of silk and metalware. Legend has it that a fortune teller read his palm and advised him to make India his home. You and your children will be blessed with immense riches in India, he proclaimed. In 1832, David Sassoon moved to Bombay with his family. His benefactor in Bushaya, Samuel Sakaraya, provided him with enough goods to stock his first go-down in Bombay. It was in Bombay that David Sassoon first put up his mezuzah on the portals at Nine Tamarind Lane. The mezuzah, that is the distinctive mark of a Jewish home. It was from this house on Tamarind Lane that David Sassoon started his business. His business soon expanded with offices in China and Japan in the east and in far off London in the west. At its height, David Sassoon's company enjoyed immense power and its influence was visible on any commodity being traded between India and other countries. It was customary at that time to describe the Sassoons as the Rothschilds of the East. A close friend of David Sassoon, an admirer of his business acumen, Jamshed Jijiji Boy once said, the chief cause of David Sassoon's success was the use he made of his sons. <laughs> He patiently trained his eight sons right from the time they attained adulthood. Among the Jews, the Bar Mitzvah ceremony marks a boy's religious coming of age at the age of 13. For David Sassoon's sons, it also meant assuming responsibility as heirs to vast riches. Sassoon and sons meant precisely that. The entire business was controlled by father and sons. Apart from his keen business sense, David Sassoon had several other facets to his personality. He was deeply religious and spent long hours studying the Talmud. He prayed regularly at the synagogue. The afternoon and evening prayers were conducted at his office. As evening approached on Friday, the gates of his office were closed to mark the commencement of the Holy Sabbath when no Jew or his employee is to do any work as ordained in the fourth commandment.
the origin of his philanthropic trait may be traced to his religious leanings towards charity in observance of what the Torah, the holy law, expected of all Jews. It said, لو تأمت لبابخا ولو تكفت يدخا مي أخي خايبيون. He was a good employer, and even the junior most employee in his office could approach him with his grievances. He personally replied to the various appeals for help that he received from different parts of the world. His love for beauty was evident in the houses he built. His house at Baikala, called Sans Souci, which is today the Messina Hospital, stands majestically in its own gardens. The double staircase in carved oak, imported from England, is one of its most distinctive features. He also built a house in the Palladian style on Malabar Hill, which had a spectacular view of the sea. David Sassoon continued to wear his traditional Baghdadi dress to the very end, out of a deep piety for his ancestral roots. He even insisted that his sons did so. It was only after the East India Company officially ceded all its political powers to the British Crown that David Sassoon permitted his family members to wear Western clothes, symbolic of his loyalty to the British Crown. David Sassoon often visited his close friend Jamshed Jijiji boy, and together they enjoyed nostalgic Persian melodies played for them on Indian string instruments. One British quality that David Sassoon admired and picked up was punctuality. Perhaps this explains his passion for building clock towers. He accepted only one public appointment offered to him by the British rulers, that of Justice of the Peace. A scholarly traveller from Palestine, Jacob Safair, has left a vivid account of David Sassoon and the 50-odd Baghdadi Jewish families in Bombay. He describes David Sassoon very aptly in just a few words. A single prince is the head over them all. Today, David Sassoon's memory lives on through the institutions he helped to found and the structures for which he generously contributed. One of the first institutions he helped to build was the David Sassoon Library and Reading Room. First started in 1847 as the Mechanics Institute by the mechanics employed in the Bombay Mint and the government dockyard. It was provided with a suitable building by David Sassoon through a donation of 60,000 rupees. The British government made a matching donation and leased a plot of 1,485 square yards where the library now stands. The library has a large and airy reading room. It has a number of rare books on various subjects. It is the third largest library in Mumbai and is open throughout the year, all 365 days from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. A marble statue as well as a full-size portrait of David Sassoon are housed in the library. David Sassoon's son, Albert Sassoon, later made a donation to the library for the provision of bookshelves and other furniture. In 1873, he presented a clock which forms the chief feature of the facade of the library building, no doubt in appreciation of his father's preoccupation with punctuality. The Gothic structure of the building has been included for conservation by the Government of India.